All right, Mike, can you tell us what kind of tools we need to install a uh, school zone timer switch? Well, one of the power tools that you're going to need, of course, is going to be a standard drill, cordless, with a step bit. It would probably be ideal for you. Otherwise, you could just get yourself a regular uh, set of bits. It's perfect for the application, what we've got going on out here. Some other tools, of course, you can be your, your standard screwdrivers, both Phillips and flat, depending upon what you got inside the box. Uh, you're going to need a tube of RTV. This is to seal the hole that you're going to end up putting in the cabinet for the, uh, the antenna. And that's just basically just to keep the water in, or keep the water from getting in there. Uh, additional tools, I would recommend, of course, it's going to be a good pair of wire strippers. Probably a nice bag or supply of zip ties. And that's to dress up your cables afterward. Uh, some, some wire, of course. We're going to need that for the application. And lastly, we're going to need uh, some crimps or, or spade lugs, I guess you could call them. Have a nice supply of butt splices and uh, terminal lugs. And of course, a tool to be able to curb them down. What are these that you're grabbing right now? Some self tapping screws because not always will things just line up just right and be able to use the existing screw holes. So you're going to have to make your own holes and, and mount the, uh, the beacon in there somehow. This is unboxing the school beacon device and what's included in here there are a couple of cables there's the antenna there is the rtc or ltec retrofit kit and there's the normal wiring harness we also have documentation in here that tells you exactly what to do for each of the different wires which we're going to go through in a little bit more detail and we have the unit itself, which is in this bubble wrap here. The first thing that you need to do is take the unit and see where you're going to mount it in the cabinet. So there's an RTC unit that's currently in the cabinet and now we need to figure out where to mount the unit inside of the cabinet. So the first thing is to unmount the existing RTC and to note there are some mounting screws inside of the RTC unit so you have to take off the faceplate and unscrew the screws that are actually mounted into the cabinet from inside of the RTC unit. What we're doing right now is moving the sun saver so that we make a little bit more space so we can install the AI time clock and we're using self-tapping screws to install the uh, sun saver. We'll be using the same hole at the top one for the sun saver to drill the hole. So we've selected the, the, the battery power for the DC powers. It's 24 volt DC and the, the negative. We need to uh, strip these back and put a couple lugs on there. Next pair that we can we can do is going to be the actual battery sense, which gets connected to the uh, the battery. Uh, again, another black and red wire, and again these things are individually labeled. Chassis ground is a green wire. I don't know if you can read that. And we have our relay one common, which is the brown wire and relay one normally open, which is going to be a purple. And that gets connected to the flasher unit, correct? That is, that is correct, yes sir. And the last wire we're going to be playing with is our solar panel voltage, which is a yellow wire. All right, one of the first things that we have to have done, of course, is remove the existing wiring harness that was in here, which was tied into the circuit card it's down through here and it connected into the bottom of the RTC beacon. We've removed that, so now we have to go ahead and land our own wiring. So we've, we've gone ahead and uh, stripped the wires back, put terminal lugs on each of the ends, 
and now we're getting ready to go ahead and uh, wire this up. We're going to start off with our power. Uh, it's going to be our plus and minus 24 volts. Those get landed to the circuit card right in this area over here. DC minus and DC plus. That is correct. After we've gone ahead and landed those wires, we're going to go ahead and continue on with the battery sense. Battery sense wires are going to be our, of course it's marked battery sense positive and battery sense negative, and those are going to get landed on the circuit card. On the battery. Which will be approximately in this area here. Which is that red and black. That is correct. And last wire that we're going to do at this point is going to be our solar panel voltage. Which is going to be uh, connected to the plus of the solar, correct? Which is correct. And that is the black wire coming in there and on the circuit board it says solar plus. Exactly. device to actually monitor lamp or have lamp out detection we have to have actually have current go through our relays now our first relay that we've already got connected right now is uh, relay one common which is going up here we've disconnected the 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 load on the sun saver so the current's going to go through this brown wire into the box and then come back out on this purple wire that I've already connected to this uh, load side on the, on the plus. Now to actually activate the beacon, we've got the second relay that's inside this box. We're going to go ahead and land these on the... Normally open and common. Yes, normally open and common on the circuit card. Prior to actually installing your antenna, one of the things that you want to make sure is, for one, do the wires clear the, uh, the cabinet? You want to make sure that you can, in fact, close the door with the wires actually connected into the box. We, we already checked this out and it does fit. All right, our next step, of course, is going to, and I may mention this earlier, we want to install the antenna then move it around to get the best signal reception that we can. So when you do go to connect up the, uh, the antenna, both of these are identical as far as the, the size of the connector. So what you got to pay attention to, of course, is the labels on the wires. Uh, if you do, in fact, get the GPS in the cell uh, reversed, it's going to be terrible on your reception. So make sure that you have these set up correctly. So in this case here, the, this bronze wired color is our cell connection. The cell, according to the box, is this top one the closest to you. The, the bottom one is your GPS connection. You just thread on, don't tighten them up super tight. And then we'll just, we'll take a guess, put it on top of the cabinet, we'll say, well, maybe in this general vicinity here, and uh, we'll take a look on glance and see what kind of signal strength is. So now we've um, logged into the uh, beacon that we've just installed. You can see information that it's currently online right now. And we can actually see that it's zero minutes and 51 seconds since it connected. We can also see the lamp status is showing okay. That means that we've wired in everything correctly and that when we turned on the lamps, everything is working correctly. If you scroll down a little bit on the screen, you're gonna see where you can activate the beacon currently it's off we just turned the beacon on previously and the beacon did come on and that's how we know that the lamp status is okay the next thing we're going to look at is the information under more details for the cell signal strength this is now going to open up the log of the data and we're going to go look in there's two options there data log io or data log device now we're going to scroll towards the right and this is going to show us, if we go a little further, the signal cell strength, which is minus 89. On a 4G beacon, anything under minus 120 is good. So now we know that we can install the antenna on top of that cabinet where we had it before.
All right, next step, of course, is going to be drilling a hole into the cabinet to uh, be able to mount the antenna. Uh, I've gone ahead and placed a little bit of bubble wrap in here to catch any metal filings, uh, just, just to try to keep them neat. But uh, you're going to be drilling a hole in here as far as our antenna. I would not recommend going anything larger than a uh, 9 sixteenths. So you've got a little bit of uh, electrical tape around there so you know how deep to go. Exactly, yes sir. Alright. You're good to go. We've already gone ahead and drilled the hole. What I'm going to get ready to do now, of course, is to put a bead of RTV around the edge just to make sure that we uh, you know, keep water from getting in there. All right, just as with any job, when, you, when you're finally getting done with it and you want to close it all up, it's always a nice practice to go ahead and dress up your cables. I mean, I'm not the greatest at this, but just get some zip ties and, and bundle the wires together so and, and make it so you can actually open and close the cabinet, uh, make it neat. Uh, I'm sure the next technician that gets in here afterwards will appreciate it.